In this video, we're going to work out the total energy that water will absorb as it goes from ice at negative 10 degrees all the way up to steam at 120 degrees. What's going to be required in that case is you're going to have to work out some heat as Q equals MC delta T formulas, so heat as the substance uh, temperature changes. Then we're going to work out the enthalpy change. We're going to have to work out how much heat is required as it changes its state. And then that process will continue over and over again. So if we consider that we're going from ice at negative 10 and we're going to end at steam of 120, I'm going to draw a heating curve to show the different phases that occur. So first, starting way down here, you're having at a temperature of negative 10 degrees, you're dealing with ice and that ice is heating up. So that's phase A, ice heats up. And then what happens is in part B, the ice is melting. What you then have at part C, it's now water, the water is heating up. So the water heats up from uh, zero degrees to 100 degrees. Now notice when ice was melting, it turns from ice at zero to water at zero. It stays zero degrees the whole time. Then once the ice melts, it becomes water. Water at zero degrees, temperature increases to water at 100 degrees. That's part C. Part D is where we would have water at 100 degrees becoming steam at 100 degrees. So this is boiling but 100 degrees stays at 100 degrees. Now you go from steam at 100 degrees up to steam at 120. So that is steam heats up. You have five different sections that you need to work out where ice heats up, then ice melts, water heats up, water boils, and steam heats up. When you're dealing with ice heats up, that is a Q equals MC delta T formula. Melting of ice is a formula where we use delta H equals NH, an enthalpy question. Water heating up, you're back to Q equals MC delta T. Boiling is a phase change. It's an enthalpy change, delta H equals NH. And steam heating up is Q equals MC delta T. So we have different formulas in each section that we need to work out. And we're going to have to pay attention as we move around from one formula to the other. The only thing missing in this example question is we don't have how much. We don't have a mass given. So let's say that the mass of ice is 15 grams that you're dealing with. Well, let's break this up into each of our sections and use the constants as we need them from our tables. So our first section that we're dealing with was part A, where it was ice at negative 10 becoming ice at zero degrees Celsius. That's a temperature change. So we're dealing with Q is MC delta T for our quantity of heat. Our mass was 15 grams. The heat capacity of ice is 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. And our temperature change goes from a final of 0 minus an initial of negative 10. So that's a 10 degree change. All right, so we'll work that out. Plug it into our calculator, we get 301.5 is what Q is. If you notice, grams have canceled, degrees Celsius has cancel, and we're left with joules behind for step one. So just heating the ice up requires 301.5 joules. Okay, so step two, you're going to boil, or melt, excuse me, you're going to melt 15 grams of ice, the zero, the temperature change is nothing. It starts at zero and ends at zero. 
Our formula for this, we're using delta H equals N times the molar enthalpy for ice. And we're going to have to now calculate the number of moles using mass and molar mass. So we have 15 grams of ice divided by the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole. And that will give us a number of moles, which we'll calculate out. I'll pause it. Getting uh, 0 0.832 moles. So now that we know N, we can calculate for ice what our enthalpy is. We need to look up the molar enthalpy of fusion for water. And you get 6.03. So we'll take our moles first. 0.832 moles and we multiply that by 6.03 kilojoules per mole which is the molar enthalpy of fusion because you're dealing with the freezing point of water. We'll plug that into our calculator and that gives me 5.019 kilojoules because moles cancels out leaves kilojoules just a quick note while we're here this is 301.5 joules this is five th or 5.019 kilojoules so if we converted that that's 5019 joules if you make it times a thousand so that we're comparing the same things okay so now you're just dealing with water water at zero degrees so our next step is to take, so part C was to take water at zero and turn it into water at 100 degrees. So to do that, we're back to a Q equals MC delta T formula because the temperature is changing. We still have a mass of 15 grams, but we're dealing with the heat capacity of water now not the heat capacity of ice. The heat capacity of water, 4.19, maybe 4.184, depending on your tables. Joules per gram degree Celsius. And your temperature change is 100 because you're going from 0 to 100. Okay, so we take 419 times 15 gives us a Q of... 6,285 joules. Grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels. We're left with a number of joules. That's the heat needed to raise water's temperature from 0 to 100. Two steps left. We're now taking water at 100 degrees and it's turning into steam at 100 degrees, no temperature change. We're into a delta H equals NH formula. The N is 0 0.832 moles. And our molar enthalpy for steam is 40.8 kilojoules per mole. So now we're going to take the uh, two numbers and multiply those together. We get ourselves 33.945 kilojoules. Watching those units carefully. Multiply that by 1,000. 33,945 joules. Last step, we have steam at 100 degrees is going to become steam at 120. So we've got a temperature change question, MC delta T, 15 grams. The heat capacity for steam is 2.01. 
joules per gram degree Celsius and a temperature change of 20 degrees Celsius. 15 times 2.01 times 20. So 603 joules, grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels, we have joules. So now we need to add 603 joules to 33,945 to 6,285 to 5,019 and lastly to 315. All of those numbers need to be added up to get the total energy. So we write all those down in one spot. The total energy is the energy for heating ice, 301.5, the energy for melting ice, 5019, the so this was A, that was B, the energy for heating the water, the energy for boiling the water, 33,945, and lastly, the energy for heating the steam. All of that adds up to 46,153 and a half, way too many significant digits to consider. So that many joules, if you divided that by a thousand, you get 46.1 kilojoules. That is the total energy required. So if the substances are different, you're still, you, when you look at a question, you need to know what substance you're dealing with because that changes the heat capacity and that may change the molar enthalpies of the substances, but you have tables to work that out. What you'll also need to consider is how many of these changes occur. Not every question will have you going from a solid all the way up to a gas. You may just deal with liquid to gas. You might just deal with solid to liquid or you might have to deal with all three, but it's very important to pay attention to when is the temperature changing and when is the state changing because it's different formulas for each one. You've really got to bear that in mind and be careful. I suggest drawing this heating curve like you see and working this question out one step at a time. If you try and do it all at once, you might run into some problems. So hopefully this helps you out and you've learned a lot from it.